All right, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Doers Cast, an original series powered by entrepreneurs at Austin. You know, everybody talks about their ideas and their dreams, but only a select few actually take action. Whether that's by starting their own business, movement, organization, you name it. And we call these special few doers. We at EAA want to inspire the community here at UT and in the general Austin area to go out there and chase their wildest dreams by featuring these doers and their stories right here. I'm your co-host, Johnson Din. And I'm your co-host, Andrew Chang. So today we have a very special guest. He's an entrepreneur, a YouTuber, and a holistic career coach who helps people who work corporate jobs find confidence and purpose through spirituality. She's lived in Sao Paulo, Brazil, as well as the San Francisco Bay Area, which is also my hometown. And she's now in Austin with her own business called Confidence Cure Coaching. And you can find her website at ccc.coach and on Instagram at YouTube at Confidence Cure Coaching. And these all will be linked down in the description. But without further ado, please welcome Miss Maria Bailey. Let's go. Yeah. Hello, Hi. hello. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me. That's an awesome yes. introduction. I'm going to hire you guys for my events. We're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, glad to have you on the show as well. And we'll get straight into it. All right, Maria. So tell the audience at home a little more about what confidence care coaching is and why people would need this type of service. Sure. So... Um, I started being a coach because I wanted to help people on their mindset, right? Sometimes you know what to do or what you want to do, but you don't trust yourself or you don't believe yourself enough, right? So this is lack of confidence. And over and over, I saw that lack of confidence was the main problem of my clients. They had great ideas. They had amazing skills went to awesome college, but they didn't have confidence on themselves to actually do things. Mm. So I decided to focus my business on confidence. Like let's understand how you can get more confidence on yourself. Cause once you believe you can do, you can do anything. Wow. So this is pretty much how I started on focusing on and hunting on the confidence thing, because I think it is actually one of the most important things uh, you need to, or to build a career, or to open a, a business, or whatever you want to do in your life, even maybe like a traveling around the world, whatever it is your dream or your goal, you need to be confident on yourself. That's very true. I've yeah. noticed that. Like in corporate, in corporate America, it's all about like, who's the most assertive or like who can speak up their ideas. That's, that's who gets like recognized. And so mm -hmm. confidence yeah. is a huge part of corporate America. And of yeah. course, entrepreneurs yeah, too. exactly. And people like you, like, of course, it all takes confidence. Yeah, like you got to believe in yourself. Um, but how did you get into like this whole coaching thing? Like, did you always want to do it from the start? Or like, what's, what's the story behind getting into this? Sure. I, I like to say that I was born a coach. I always wanted, I always like to, you know, like give people some tips and tricks or I don't know, life hacks. And I, my family and my friends, they always came to me asking for advice. I didn't have yet the tools and the technique, but it was something that you, you know, it was natural for me. And then I went to college, graduated in marketing, and my clients were having a lot of trouble with their mindset, right? I knew what they had to do. I had all the techniques like, oh, you have to post this, you have to say that, and you have to write this way. Mm -hmm. But they were so, um, they, they, what would hold them back would be their mindset. They like, I don't like sales. I don't know how to do, you know, it was like fear and lack of confidence. Yeah. So I decided to go to coaching school because I thought like, oh, mindset mm -hmm. is something that a coach does. Um, and then I went to coaching school and then I love it, guys. It was just so, <laughs> like, really this is my tribe. Nice. This is what I do for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And then I learned how to do what I was doing, but on the, you know, a more professional way with a better technique and with, you know, tools and scientific uh, tools as well. And this is pretty much how I became a coach. And it's been a bless. Wow. wow. I like that. Have you... Yeah. Have you been, did you go to like the coaching school stuff in the U.S. or was that like in Brazil? 
It was in the US, it was Bay Area. Cool. Wow. So you had the general personality for this, for coaching. But did you have the personality for confidence as well, like naturally? Were you always confident or did you start off kind of insecure and you realized you had to change and grow? Mm, I think I'm, I'm pretty brave. I, I think my confidence was always <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I'm, of course, that like everybody, sometimes I doubt myself and sometimes I'm not confident enough. But uh, I, I think I'm pretty good on that. I, you know, I moved from US nine years ago, like by myself. I didn't have, you know, idea on what I wanted to do or wow. like nothing. It was just like a pure courage, I want to say. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm pretty confident on, on myself. Did you come to the US like because you like, was there something about Brazil that you didn't like or you just like really wanted to come to the US? No, I was, yeah, it was about Brazil, actually. I was like, I don't mm. know. I don't want to live here anymore. Uh, there is nothing else for me. Like, my career was pretty much, like, stagnated. And like, mm. I need something new. So that's why I decided to move. I never thought I would leave here. I thought it would be, like, two years, two years and a half. Yeah. And then back to Brazil, and that never happened. <laughs> wow. You're here. So, so what brought you, I know you were in the, the Bay Area. What brought you from there to, like, Austin? Um, before Austin, I was in Houston. So the that's where I'm from, by the way. I'm from Houston. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Nice. The whole story was that I wanted to be closer to my family. Mm. Um, Texas is like geographically closer to Brazil, of course. So I wanted to be closer to them. And I wanted actually to be in a warmer place because if you've been in San oh, Francisco, yeah. you know yeah, that yeah, city yeah. is gorgeous, <laughs> but it's cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just want to also have like a more affordable life. Um, I I don't like people that are afraid of moving to San Francisco, New York, or whatever because the city is uh, expensive. But it was like it just. Um, yeah, for what I wanted on the next step of my life, San Francisco wasn't really supportive. And that's why we decided to move to Texas. And that has been the best idea. We spent some time in, in Houston. It was super great. And then we were like, oh, so maybe let's try something different. And then we moved to Austin. And here we've been so, so happy. Yeah, um, I mean, that's, that's kind of why I came to Austin too, you know, like, um like part of it was for college obviously but like i've always been very invested in like entrepreneurship and startups i knew austin was a growing place for that and like now that i'm getting you know a lot more involved in like the, the startup, startup culture here, here like there's just so many opportunities everyone, everyone here is just so chill, chill about it so nice, nice. so definitely, definitely a great place to be and it's also surprising because because austin is so you know startups and very ambitious people that I remember we talked to Mr. about this and he said that you said when you came to Austin, there wasn't that much demand or like supply for confidence coaching, which I'm really surprised by. What I think I was trying to say on that conversation and there's like a specific tool that I use on my coaching that mm. it's not that there's not a demand is that people are not aware yet. And oh, aware. Yeah. 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 Okay. I see. So I it's think like... that was it. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. I see that. Yeah. Cause I wasn't yeah. aware of this. This existed either. Confidence coaching is very new, very unique to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, but I do believe there there is a demand. Like everybody, especially now that we are trying to go back to the in person world, yeah. people are trying to you know understand how they're gonna do this and if they want to do this. Some people they really want to stay working from home and do most of the things virtually. Um, so I, I think there is a demand of trying to figure it out how they're going to do things, right? Because uh, of the, the doors and how you're going to do things. So yes. I think there's a demand for trying to understand what will make you feel more confident on your idea, service, product, whatever it is. Yeah. But from a place that makes you feel also comfortable with yourself. So if yeah. what makes you comfortable is, you know, being mostly virtual, how can I do this? Or if it's going back to in-person thing, how can I do this without like bringing too much like anxiety, for example, which is something that a lot of people are feeling 
or without feeling like it drained because if it, this is an, another thing that people are feeling. So I think there is a, a lot of demand on figuring out this next thing. So I cannot um, say that there is not demand for coaching. And, and coaching is pretty much, you know, like if building or coming up with a strategy to do things. The, mm -hmm. Doing it is the main thing, the main focus of uh, coaching, it's action. Right. This is uh -huh. this is what makes it different than therapy or than consultation or yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you talked about a lot. You talked a lot about like virtual and how that affects people's confidence. So did COVID affect people's confidence and has that like made it more demand for confidence coaching recently? Yes. You have no idea. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. My schedule was crazy the uh, last uh, last year because I think people are experiencing so many different things at the same time you know like how to figure it out life and a lot of anxiety a lot of low mood if it's not a depression but it's like a low mood um mm. so yeah last year was it was definitely crazy and it's still actually on the trying to figure it out the way back or the way forward yeah. it's, it's still <laughs> a lot of people are you know, looking for support. Maybe it's not necessarily coaching, but I see people, a lot of people looking for support. Yeah. Wow. So, so you're like specific, like holistic career coaching, right? And it, um, it's, it's kind of different from like normal career coaching where you focus more on like, I guess, mindset and like reflection, spirituality like well. spirituality. Yeah. Um, can you like tell us a little more about like how that's different from just like the normal regular coaching? Yeah. Regular yeah. coaching. Yeah, sure. Um, I think the main difference that I add, I'm not going to say spirituality for energetic um, mm. tools. And the way I understand holistic is, at least like on my business, is that I do the practical part, right? So we talk about resume, we talk about pitch, we talk about um, cover letter, LinkedIn, and all these practical things that you have to do to have a great career and or yeah. business. And then I also talk about the mindset. So where your mind needs to be, you need to be confident, you need to be um, held like, so no extreme anxiety, no low moods. So you need to have like a, a health mindset and understand what may be, can, or what, which beliefs can be holding you back on achieving what you want. So this is the mindset. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is the energetic, energetic, um, work which i think is the main differential so i also like offer for the clients that are open of course i offer reiki and i offer access consciousness which is just an energetic tool and that also it helps like with the the, uh, the other two things right when your energy is balanced it helps on your mindset which helps you to do nice things and you know so it's this, this triad Mm. that I call it holistic. Mm. Definitely. All right. So your audience is mainly about, or at least on your website, you, you want to help minority women in corporate, right? It's not just, it, it, are your clients mainly minority women? And why so? You know, that's a great question. Not anymore. Not anymore? <laughs> not anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the beginning, uh, I think because I'm from Brazil, I most of my clients were Latinx, uh, usually women. Yeah. Yeah. But now I see a shift. It's still like most of my clients are women. Mm -hmm. It's but but I, I think now, you know, like going back on everybody's looking for support. I yeah. see my clients, my clients' profile changing a lot lately. Uh and it's pretty much everybody. But, but I think yeah, yeah. I see my clients changing a lot. Wow. I do see a lot of immigrants, so maybe yeah. this is something that I attract naturally. Yeah. <laughs> and do you notice they have similar problems? Like, do immigrants, workers here in corporate have, like, do they face different problems than, say, like, a white male who was born here? No. No. So they're all no. the same? Wow. No. And, the, and this is one thing that I... I always like to share people like, because people tend to think that 
they are experiencing something because they are women or because they are immigrant or because they are Latinx or it is not. It's, it's just like a human problem. Yes. Because as a human, true. you will experience this in maybe like a different phases of your, your life, but you will yeah. experience that. And people have the tendency that, to think that this is, it is, you know, it is about something else. Yeah. So, no, yeah. no. And I was, I was surprised when I started to, you know, see like a different uh, kind of profile of clients uh, and understand that we pretty much have the same problems. The problems. Maybe wow. you have a little bit more one and less of, you know, less of the yeah. other, yeah. but it's the same. Uh, I mean, yeah, that, that makes sense actually, because, yeah. you know, like no matter what, what you're doing, what you're working in, like you're, you're always like, there's always going to be like the same, like, you know, eventually you're going to get burnt out at some point. And eventually, you know, you're like, we all face obstacles in our career, regardless of what we're doing. And, you know, sometimes we, we, we need that extra boost to like help us overcome those obstacles. And I think that bridges into the next question. Like, what, what do you think is like one of the biggest obstacles that you faced in your own career in like coaching? Mm. I think was figuring out the business side. Mm. And yeah, and this, this is what I tell a lot of my clients when they are, you know, tired or burnout of corporate. Mm. Like, oh, I wanted to open my own business and be free. And it is. And then they don't know how to do uh, it. Exactly. Yeah. And I understood like uh, doing that your service or your product is totally different than having a business. So mm -hmm. business skills is something and what you offer is something else. So maybe yeah. you're really good. I don't know. You're really good cook, for example, yeah. really talented, mm -hmm. but it is not just about like opening a restaurant. It is you also understanding and learning business skills. So you, yeah, at the yeah. end, you have to mm -hmm. have both and really well. And I, ha mm -hmm. I didn't understand that I had to have business skills to be a, a mm -hmm. good coach or a successful coach. Uh -huh. And that was, really, that was really challenging because business mm -hmm. skills take a while for you to yeah, learn and understand. Yeah. And, you know, so... Was there any, like, specific so, skills? Like, like marketing, sales, or, like, finding leads? Yeah. Was it like that, that you really like struggle with? Or? It was a little bit of everything, guys. I'm mm. not going to lie. Marketing skills. And, and my, my background is marketing. It was sales oh. skills. Um, mm. Yeah. It is a whole new world that you have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. so, did you yeah. um, like try to do a lot of it yourself? Or did you like try to find people right away to help you? A lot by myself. Mm. At the beginning, a lot by myself. And then when I was like maybe two years in, I was like, I need help. This is not working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and wait, which, which specific business uh, problems did you face? Like give a story, maybe like, did you have trouble finding leads or clients for your service? Um, no trouble finding, but being consistent with, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, let me give you an example. A coaching, usually a coaching program is like a 10 to 12 sessions. Yeah. which will be around three months. So mm -hmm. every three months, right? I needed an, a new yeah. batch of clients. Mm -hmm. So keeping this consistency, so because I, I have bills and I have, you know, mortgage, rent. And yeah. so keeping this consistency was the most challenging thing. Definitely. And how did you keep it consistent? Like, how did you find a new batch of clients? I, I, that's, I think my solution was, is starting to work in partnership as a contractor for companies. And I like to say that this was my solution because people are different. So don't copy me, don't follow me if it doesn't work yeah. for you. Mm. But it helps me to work as a contractor because I, then I have like a really nice foundation or a, a like, you know, a minimum that is guaranteed. It's all a base of people. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then I can fly and flow and you know, create different projects without being worried if I will have or not, you know. Yeah, yeah. That, that's definitely super important, you know, like that, that's, I feel like that's a great example of like resourcefulness, like finding a solution. And, yeah. um, you know, in entrepreneurship, 
consistency, I feel like is one of the hardest things that you need to accomplish because, you know, you could have a lot of success in a short amount of time, but if you can't stretch that out and it doesn't last, then like, you know, just a one-hit exactly. wonder. Yeah, that yeah. was a business. That was so, just luck. Yeah, like consistency, consistency, consistency. Yeah. Whether and it's you like- also have to understand, you know, like, because you have to also grow, not slow, but understanding how much you can offer. Because if your business, like, you know, um, explode and it is like an amazing success, but then you can deliver, Mm. It also doesn't work, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. you have to understand how much you can grow per month. It, it is a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, moving on to like content creation, because I know you have like your Instagram page and like your YouTube channel. Well, um, what's it been like, like running those? Like, are you the one that like runs every, all of that or do you have people? Um, and like, what, what's, what's it like doing that? So for content creation, I, I do what I like what it gives me, you know, joy. Because mm-hmm. before I, I would try to have like the Facebook page and the da 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 on it and mm-hmm. all the social medias and it wasn't working at all. So I no, decided no engagement. To, it wasn't maybe it wasn't again on the consistency thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Because on top of having clients and posting things and you know creating and writing content. It is a lot of work. So I wasn't able to be consistent. And I believe that for social media to work, you have to be consistent. Yeah. So it was lack of, again, lack of consistency. And most of my lack of consistency was like a lack of joy. Like I don't like to do this thing. So I'm not going to force myself to do it. Uh You have to do what excites you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) YouTube is something that I love. I eat YouTube. I, Mm -hmm. I follow so many people. I learn so many things. So YouTube is something that excites me a lot. Mm -hmm. I do have a person who helps me. I have an editor. I don't like editing videos. I love it. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm the editor at UW, and I can it's tell you, it's, it's a grind. It's a grind. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So I have this person, and he's awesome. He gets my style, and be he's so open to having conversations, and also to help me to, you know, giving me different ideas. So mm, this yeah. has been working. And then for Instagram. Honestly, I don't have a bunch of a strategy there. I post mm-hmm. when I feel like, I post what I feel like. Sometimes I post something that is related to career or related to confidence. And sometimes it's just like what I was doing yeah. this morning. So like something more personal. I don't have much of a strategy, but it's something that I like. I like to yeah. share some, you know, some stuff with people mm-hmm. and encourage them to to, to go out and do stuff yeah yeah definitely yeah. like i think i think that's that's like that's definitely a lot more important in my opinion than like you know having a strategy and like posting what you think people will like because um yes you want to like you want people to like what you post but what's more important is like having that authenticity and just being, being yourself yeah. so like i really like that you you prioritize that and i think that's like a lot of people should should focus on that more like you know like because so many people worry like oh like i want to post this but this person's going to say this about it or this person's going to like not like this <laughs> just do it just do it like yeah. if someone doesn't like it so what you like yeah. you don't need them you know like the people who who like it and who who like what who you are like that like they're there to stay and they're the people that matter so i really like that yeah yeah <laughs> And most of the time, like people, you know, the majority of your followers, they will like it. They will like it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, And speaking of YouTube, I specifically find YouTube a very doer activity because there was one moment where like you were like, okay, I'm going to post my first video. I'm going to do it. So like, what was that that inspiration that made you like really start your first video? Or like start your YouTube channel in general? Because, you know, I'm assuming there was something that happened. Wow, that's a great question. Let me see. I think it was how much YouTubers inspire me to do different things. And and it's it's not actually on doing things, but on learning things. So, so many things that I learned because of YouTube, 
that I, you know, I would, it would take me years to figure it out by myself. Yeah, so yeah. that inspires me a lot. And I was like, oh, you know what? I also have some stuff to offer and that I can share with people. Yeah. Yeah. I, to- I understand that there are so many other coaches on YouTube sharing what I share, but mm-hmm. they don't share the way I share. They, you know yeah, what I mean? Like sure. they don't have the same background or the same whatever or the same accent. So, yeah. so I'm going to do the way I want to do. And maybe if I can inspire some people, awesome. So yeah. that was really the thing, like how people would educate me. I think that was uh, inspire me. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. So for the audience at home, she has a YouTube and it's amazing. She gives advice. Like one of my favorite ones is the first one you posted, which was seven activities to be more confident, like things you can do to be more confident. And I really like that you said activities to do. You don't just say like, oh, I like think this or think that you tell them this is what you should do. And like, this is what we're all about. Like mm-hmm. we're about like doing things first and that lets you change like what you think about. And so yeah. do you want to like, talk a little about that video like uh promote it real quick or explain what happened in, explain what happened inside of it yes of course but it is you got it you got it that was the idea it was like having or, or encouraging people to go out and do it sometimes mm-hmm. it's not enough like just to think differently because you can think differently and stay on your couch Yes. If you challenge yourself to go out and do something at least once, you will see that maybe it wasn't as hard. Maybe it wasn't a challenge. Maybe it kind of gave you some pleasure and joy. Or maybe you'll never ever do it again. But at least you try it. It's true. We have to try. There's this there's this quote, and it goes, "We don't think ourselves into new ways of living. We live ourselves into new ways of thinking." And that perfectly describes what you did in your channel, in your video, and what we're all about too. Because again, like you can think differently and be on the couch, that doesn't really change anything. And that won't really, you won't really internalize your new thoughts. But when you yeah. go out there and just do the activities, mm-hmm. boom, like you become that person and your mind, your mindset naturally changes with that, you know, new activity that you do. And yeah. So we, yeah. You know, and like one of our favorite points from your video was the third one, which was do something unexpected on purpose. purpose. So... <laughs> um like how did you come up with that and like tell us more about that point yeah how do you come up with your ideas and all that i really like that um i th- i i come uh, doing research i go on internet and i do research like see what other people are you know like doing and uh how they are trying to inspire people and then i i kind of the way i create is like oh this would be uh helpful for a client for example mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like from, from my perspective, I create from my perspective as a coach, like, oh, this is what, this is what would help a client or this is what would help my audience. Um, this is the way I, I do some research and then I refine a little bit for what I think it would really work. And doing something unexpected, it is, do you want something more challenged than this? Like in purpose, like do something unexpected on purpose, like (laughs) the ultimate challenge. And I totally agree with you. Like when you go do something, it is, it is hard to explain, but it's inside of you. There's something that is born. Then it wasn't there, you know, and that can give you courage. That can give you confidence. That can give you whatever it is but go do things go do things experience things yeah what what's something that what's something unexpected that you've done on Mm. purpose and what what was the what was the result oh my gosh yeah (laughs) something unexpected on purpose okay i have one i I haven't done yet but i'm planning so is this okay Okay. yeah 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 so i am planning to do um like an obstacle run like a mud run mm-hmm. kind of thing. Ooh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So okay. yeah, I'm talking to a friend. You're looking for something, maybe in Dallas, um, to September, October, uh-huh. and it, it will be super challenge for myself, my mind, my body, um, and definitely unexpected. I wasn't expecting to do this. Why? Why? Why did you want? Like, where did the idea come from? I love challenge. I love challenge and I love to challenge my body. Mm, yes. Uh, so, so, the, and, and I think it was, it will, it will be fine. You know, yeah. I'm not trying to be the first one <laughs> in the gold medal anyway. So I'm going yeah. for fun. 
but I love to challenge my body. I love to challenge my body. Uh, every time that I go one step further with my body, I know that my mental also, you know, opens up. Uh, yeah. And I, I believe that I can do more things mentally. Yeah, definitely. So build your confidence too, as well. Like breaking those limits. Definitely. Definitely, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Like I've had some confidence challenges as well. I like challenges too. And one that sticks out to me was um, the 100 days of rejection. There, have you ever watched that TED talk? No. Oh, but I, I love talking about this. It's this challenge by Zha Zhang. And he tells people to go out there and ask for absurd things to strangers. Because most people are scared of rejection. But once you do that, and you, you're, once you do those absurd requests, and people tell you no, well, guess what? You, you, you just tell your mind that it's okay. Like, you, you realize that nothing bad happened. It was just a no, basically, right? And so you challenge yourself, you get rejected, but then you build yourself. You just told yourself that I can live, I can survive through this. And it's very similar to like the physical challenges. Like, yeah, I can make it through. I can make it through the physical challenges. I can make it through the social challenges. I can live through this. And this really builds confidence as well. And that's, that's what I've been doing. So like, I really love like confidence building as well. Yeah. And, oh yeah. If you and love this, this, this uh, TED Talk, uh, try to, uh, maybe you already read, uh, it's a book that it's called Go For No. Open up. Yeah, it's pretty. Yes, I'm pretty sure it's similar to this. Yeah. Similar. Yeah, the, it is the same idea, and I love it. It really helped me this book as well to go over the fear of like, oh, people are gonna say no, or yeah. and it is really like you go for no. Yeah, honestly, like that that transformed me. But uh, speaking of transformations, like, do you have any transformation stories for your clients? Like, were there any clients that you that came into your office and they were like? They were like really slouching, they were no eye contact, they were not smiling, and you're like, man, this person, <laughs> they need some work, right? And then, boom, you did your coaching and they changed. So, do you have any stories like that? Oh. Yes. Let me think about one. I think she was one of my first clients, but I still love this story because it was something that I think somehow impacted me mm -hmm. personally. Uh, she is... Uh, 50-ish years old Latina, Latina woman. And she had been bullied inside of her household for her whole life. Wow. So just imagine the challenge, yeah. right? Because it's not something that you can run, run away from. Yeah. Um, and she wanted to change jobs. But, you know, again, she's on her 50s. And we know that ageism is something that it's real, right? Yeah. So it's not as easy for a 50 years old woman comparing to a 20 years old one. Yeah, to change. And we worked from for maybe six months, six to eight months. And she was able to land, and it's not to land a new job, which I think it was just the most impressive, impressive thing. She was invited to a new job. Wow. And being invited is totally different than you saying yeah. your resume, yeah. right? So any it was really like about mindset because she didn't have any confidence because it was her mother, it was her sister, it was you know everybody bringing her down, and we you know we worked together, wow. built everything together, wow. and the resume, and also like he had, uh, she had um, a challenge uh, relationship with her manager. So it wasn't just like the household thing. Yeah. And at the end, she was invited to one of the companies that was her, you know, dream companies. I was mm -hmm. just like, wow. Yeah. And I think that That's helped nice. me really to believe in what I was doing. Like I can really transform people's life. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Well, what, what specific activities did you do with her that, that really helped with that mindset shift? Mm. It was like a lot of working on communication. So don't be afraid of talking to uh, your manager, for example, or to uh, uh, limiting your, your boundaries and say like, I can do this or I will not do this or, you know, sharing your ideas. So it was a lot of encouraging on communication and also inside the, the house, understanding the relationship with the mother and also understanding like boundaries and, and limits and answering and maybe like uh, going for support outside of the household so i think it was 
communication boundaries and understand where where else you can find support wow. yeah definitely like i mean in entrepreneurship communication is also like a super important thing like you have to be able to to voice your thoughts to people because you know you could have an idea like in your head but if you can't you know like get it out and like get people to help you then you know it's going to be hard to like solve your own problems so yeah like finding help when you need it also key exactly yeah. and i think listening listening is also really key mm -hmm. listening to your clients and understanding what they really need from you right how you can change how you can pivot how you can do better so listening i think is also a really important mm -hmm. thing in your business yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. That was a really great story, by the way. Like, I really appreciate listening yeah. to that because that kind of inspired me too. Like, I didn't know people still change at that age. Like, that's a very like mm -hmm. that's a very hard age to change at fifty. You, you build up like fifty years of a specific habit, yeah, specific character, yeah. and to be able to change that, like, that's kudos to you. Like, I I heavily applaud you on that, and that's that's amazing. Wow, yeah, that's good for the people at home too to know that like it's never too late to start like she was 50 years old mm -hmm. and she changed her family life her manager life her work life just from confidence coaching and that's great so Definitely. any more questions to ask um yeah so i guess um another question is um where where do you see yourself in five years and your business this is the either way question um in five years I wanted to be speaking internationally. It doesn't have to be in five years, hopefully sooner. Uh, but in five <laughs> like, years, like, you, you want your business to be to be like not just in the U.S. but like also other countries. Well, exactly, exactly, mm. other countries uh, for sure. And yeah, yeah, I have a goal to also have like a wellness center. But that mm -hmm. won't be in five years. <laughs> that would be more like 10 to 12 to 15. Uh -huh. But in five years, definitely, I want my business to be in other countries, maybe Europe. Mm -hmm. Is it right now? Is, is it just like, it's like all, all the US right now? All the US, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I work, yeah, I work online only. Uh -huh. What about like, like as, a, as a person, like, are there any skills? You think like personal skills that you're working on, like self development, that personal projects, that's it. Personal projects. Or skills. Uh, go ahead. What? Oh, like, like projects or skills that are personal to you. Mm, it's speaking. It's speaking. I've been um, working with a mentor, a coach actually, to mm -hmm. to develop public speaking and my speech and how to do this professionally so so that's something that i've been investing a lot of time on um, how so, to speak better and, and yes. inspire people and touch people teach people yeah that's, oh, yeah, that's true we're also trying to work on speaking yeah too. like last night we had like this improv thing where the three of us give like a random topic to one person sitting up here and they would have to make up a speech on the spot mm -hmm. and like each of us rotated and we were trying to all night it was really fun and like like speaking is such a huge point skill too so we relate to that and we're working on that too so it's <laughs> pretty awesome yeah yeah, so cool. yeah. all right so, and then we have our our final like ewa specific question yeah um, before our so first. yeah i i know you said like in in, a, in an interview i saw about you you said that you prefer to focus on the on the present and like what's happening on the moment rather than like worrying about the future and so um to relate that to like being a doer what is something you're doing right now in your life to become more of a doer hmm. i think it's being really present and i know that <laughs> i know that maybe he's not answering yet to your question but he's like being present of you know like listening more to people because mm. i have the tendency to you know like i want to solve for you i want to help you i want to mm. you know like i see that you have a problem let's do it mm. together and and i and i'm what i'm exercising now is really to listen to what That's you different. want yeah. asking mm. for what do you want how can i support you if i can yeah. instead you know giving already the solution and like run you know to help you so it's really being yeah. present with the person. And if the person says like, I don't want anything, be fine with that. 
Yeah. Very true. Active Definitely. listening. Well, Being speaking of speaking of that, like, is there anything that you wanted to ask or like wanted to bring up as well or talk about or anything you want from us? Mm. Anything we can help you on? I'm just curious. Not not just for the podcast, but for like anything. No, not really. Not really. <laughs> I, if you can, yeah. I would just, I would love to people go to my YouTube channel, but we talk like several times already. Yeah. Um, yeah. And maybe my website, I will have a lot of events. I'm trying to have a lot of events around the city. So that will be cool. But people have to go to the website to check or maybe to social media. So just the basics, check my social medias and this is it. And awesome. yeah, mm-hmm. and I guess my the curiosity... Practice. My curiosity question would be, I don't know, what is, I know that the goal for you guys inspire people to do things, but like, what is one um, tangible goal for the podcast? Like when we read this, this goal, we know that we be, that, you know, we have been successful i don't know that's a good question that's a really good um, question I, I think i think i have one one thing that i can think of right now is right now all of our guests that we come on our podcast they're people that we reach out to right and i think that at, at a certain point when we grow at a certain point people are going to start wanting to us. come to our podcast and reach out to us and i think when we reach that point it's going to be like yeah we're really established and people want to come to us now and i think that's that's going to be like a a good point for for being like a tangible goal yes awesome so let's keep doing thank you all right so before we wrap things up is there a final message you want to tell our listeners and everyone back at home get out of your couch and do it do it it doesn't (laughs) matter what it is do it just do it be a doer (laughs) be a doer be a doer yeah just start yeah just start That was the episode. Mm -hmm. All right. This was Maria Bailey. This is her YouTube, her blog, her website. (laughs) Love everything linked again. We really want you to check her out. Confidence coaching. This is what like people need. People need these nowadays, especially after COVID. I'm pretty sure people are more anxious and shy, socially awkward. This is what you need, guys. So again, this is Maria Bailey. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And we'll see you guys in the next episode.